Hi everyone, welcome to Citrus Saturday and my name's Scott Winard. let's do bonsai. So here we have four citrus trees, all have been growing for quite a while. We have two lemon ones, easy to notice this one because it's in a lemony yellow pot. And over this side we have two orange trees and just so happens this one's in an orangey coloured pot. So I think what we'll do is we're going to start today on the lemon trees because we do seem to have um, some infestation on the larger yellow tree. It seems to have had some white fly or fruit fly. Um, that's laid lots of sap all over the leaves and then the leaves have uh, created a black sooty mould and then obviously the, the vicious cycle of uh, the flies laying eggs and and uh, reproducing and everything has just gone and gone and gone and then in the tent where these were they have just created lots and lots of uh, flies flying around. Now, I did put some of those sticky yellow sheets that you can get they've been hanging inside the tent so they've caught a good number of, uh, of the flies uh, but it's time to uh, prune these back and defoliate them and get them into a new bonsai pot. So here's the the first lemon tree. Um, I think the first thing we're going to do with this tree is we will defoliate it, get a good look at the the branch structure, and see what uh, what damage has been done by the uh, the infestation of the animals. Uh, we'll probably come in with some soapy water as well at, at some stage. To, uh, to clean all the branch structure down. So let's go ahead with defoliation. Trimming the leaves off, leaving a small part of the petiole in place. We'll work around the tree. These do have some little thorns on these trees so be careful not to uh, prickle yourself too much as you're working away. Now this, this tree has been growing really well despite its um, infestation of the white fly, green fly, whatever's uh, flying around, fruit flies. Um, it's, it's been doing really well, so it's nice and strong. Uh, obviously you should never do this to a, a tree that isn't strong, because you'll more than likely kill it off. Uh, but I do believe that there's enough strength in this tree with the growth that I've been seeing and the additional growth up top that we can defoliate and clean up this tree. The leaves, the fresh leaves, the new leaves have grown in really well. They're nice and clean. Uh, I have been spraying the tree regularly um, so it looks like most of the damage has been cleared but we do need to prune and uh, get this looking something like a bonsai so it's the ideal opportunity to, to take this action. And it'll be nice to get it into a nice bonsai pot. It's been waiting a long time. This has been a project that I've promised myself on a number of occasions, but life has kept throwing me little curveballs of problems that have prevented me from getting on with being able to do a citrus Saturday. It's been a it's been in, in plan for a long time. 
to do Citrus Saturday and uh, like I say life has just continued to find a way to stop me doing it. So we'll just continue to defoliate, working my way around the tree. The leaves are quite sticky in some places which is where the the flies have been attacking the plant, taking the the goodness of the tree and then laying down their sticky secretion which obviously won't have been good for the tree but it's nevertheless it's maintained its health and its strength the new like I say the new growth is really strong and vigorous and it's grown out really well despite being covered in all this black sooty sap Hopefully this will help the tree, it will clean it up, get it out of the soil that it's in, get it into some good bonsai soil and uh, it can start growing again nicely. It's in the tent so it's not quite seasonal, um, it kind of just keeps doing its thing so the time of year isn't a factor really for this tree. So we just keep working around the tree, taking the leaves off, leaving a small bit of petiole on. did have some flowers on this tree um, a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I went in on a watering and there were some beautiful white flowers flowering on it which obviously tells, told me that uh, there was still plenty of strength in this tree for it to be able to put out flowers. We didn't get any fruit on it which normally comes behind the flower on a, on a citrus tree. Um, but that's okay because we'd have probably had to take the, uh, the fruit off anyway because obviously that takes the uh, strength away from the tree trying to put out a tree trying to put out um, fruit is putting lots of energy into putting out the fruit which obviously is taking away from the tree's actual strength. Just becoming a little bit awkward inside the, the branch structure to, to get to the leaves. Yeah, I think we've kind of got this just at the right sort of time. Um, I think if we'd uh, allowed this to go too much longer, uh, the tree would have started showing signs of um, not being too well. Um, inside we've got quite a bit of dustiness to the leaves on the inside. Now they won't have been getting as much light, etc. And they'll have been getting attacked from the insects that we've had but uh, this process will clear it up 
and give it its best opportunity to carry on its life. In our case as a bonsai. So that's the uh, defoliation process complete. We can see all the branch structure now. We can see there's a lot of uh, stickiness to the uh, to the trunks and the branches. Um, so what I'll do is we'll get rid of all these sticky infested leaves, get them into a waste bag, get that sealed up and chucked into the uh, to the bin. Uh, so obviously we can't get any further infestation from that. We'll come back, we will start having a look at the, the branch structure. Uh, we'll try and clean it up a little bit and we'll then start making some decisions as to which branches we're going to keep and which ones we're going to get rid of uh, in order to uh, start making this, this lemon tree into our, our new bonsai lemon tree. Hi everyone, so we're back with uh, the cleaning materials. Uh, I've got a spray bottle with some washing solution in. Uh, standard washing liquid, small amount uh, and water. And then the same here in a bowl, just to be able to dip and clean the toothbrush that I'm gonna use to, uh, to get into the branch structure. So I'm just gonna start here as good as any, and I'm gonna just support the branch with my hand and just use the brush to scrape any of this sticky sap away from the branch. Straight away it's on my hands, the black sticky sap. So it's gonna be quite a clean up job required. Um, but it has been sat waiting for this, this poor little thing. Um, but we'll work our way around the, uh, the tree, cleaning up every little branch, just using my hand and my fingers just to support the branch as it's being cleaned and just clean it as best we can towards the ends. And you can see underneath, it's a lovely fresh green. Now all that sticky, mildewy, horrible sap and build up has been removed. Uh, when I did see this, I did uh, I wasn't obviously fully aware of, I'd seen stuff before, but wasn't really sure what it was. Um, so I Googled it and the best ways to get rid of it. And uh, this, this is the solution. Uh, clean it, clean it off, uh, remove as much as needs to be removed and uh, you can see that it just comes off nicely with the soapy solution. Um, so it's just a little bit of a time spent just to clean it up. So we'll start each branch trying to get it on the extremities. I started down here on that one, which was a bit of a silly move because we're going to keep working down towards it with these higher branches. So we'll support it with my hand and use the toothbrush to get it off. Now I can see on this branch, lots of the egg sacs that have been laid and if you can see that on my finger all the bits some of that is the little white egg sacs that are lined up along the branch uh, similar to what scale insects would look like I, I would say uh, but if you can see there that is you know ready to to turn into a fly and start laying even more eggs and secreting even more sap so this solution very small amount of, of washing uh solution the, the standard washing up liquid or you know that sort of thing that you would get 
in your cupboard at home and you shouldn't do any damage to the uh, to the tree as long as we rinse it all off afterwards and seeing as eventually we're going to be repotting it also we'll be getting rid of any of the residue that ends up in the soil as well by uh, totally replacing the soil which we need to do anyway because there's prob probably uh, quite a bit of larvae etc that's down in the uh, in the soil um, I did have one in particular plant uh, which it just used to get lots of flies it didn't get covered in black soot and sap uh, but it used to get lots of flies off it and uh, I basically repotted it and all the uh, all the flies that used to keep popping up and materializing disappeared along with the repot so obviously along with this sort of cleanup work especially with how time consuming and labor intensive it, it really is when it comes to looking after trees and bonsais etc it's definitely worth taking the time to uh, to repot and replace the soil and obviously make sure that we dispose of the soil bin it get rid of it stick it outside in the cold make it so that it isn't gonna give us another infestation somewhere else you know just just get rid of this straight away um, it's just the best thing to do so we'll just continue working around in this same motion and effort until the trees nice and clean and then we can start selecting which branches we'd like to keep to develop our bonsai tree so I'll carry on with the cleanup and I'll come back to you when it's done So here we are back after the cleanup process. So that's defoliation complete and cleanup complete. Uh, I was saving the bowl of, uh, of water to show you exactly how bad it was. And then just without thinking, I, I got up, walked over to the sink and poured it away and cleaned all that up. It was absolutely pitch black, dirty, sludge, horrible with all the stuff that had come off of uh, all of these branches and hopefully you can see now that they're all really nice vibrant green uh, there may be a few bar parts on there that, uh, that that i may have missed but um, yeah it looks really well and the bark you can see is nice and brown and we can see the the stripy lines of the bark um, that were hidden underneath by the the black sooty mold that had appeared um, so our next step is to take a look at this branch structure that we've got. Um, my first choice is going to have to be, we've got this main trunk running up here that comes to here and has been previously cut off here. Um, that's got some branching that comes out there and is doing a, a part of a canopy there if you like. And then the, the lower branches have come out and, and taken off. And where, the, where the, uh, the main branch divides into two here, if I turn it that way, you can see the main branch dividing into two. It was originally cut off here, the main branch as it came up. Um, and the, the branch underneath has taken over and has shot up and disappeared up and beyond now there are some now I turn it around and have another look 
there are a few scale insects or pods that are, uh, that are visible now on here. I thought I'd got most of it, but they will just rub off now. The soapy water will have done its done its job. Um, so yeah, they are just just rubbing away. But we'll we'll revisit those as we now decide on our height and then how we bring it in and make it more compact. So I think we will first of all select the height for the tree which must have been at some stage around about here um, and then these other branches have, have taken over and and gone off so so I think we'll lose this where it was cut off before and use this where it goes into two and create a canopy around about that sort of height uh, which means reducing all this top structure back to some leaf nodes and scars where we can where we can uh, bring it in and work with it so if we start first of all i will bring this part back a flush to the trunk and we'll tidy that up just a bit more so that's taken that away so that where it goes into two there that can carry on up now our height was intended to be around about here so if we work from the top bringing it down to uh, everywhere where there's a leaf scar I'm going to take this one's coming out of a junction where it branches into five so we'll just take out the ones that we don't want <clears throat> and just take out the ones that we want to get rid of and then that one that's shooting up from the middle we'll take that out also bringing our structure from one into two. So this branch carries on up here and goes into quite a few sprout, sprouts off into quite a few points. So this one that runs off here, I think we need to get rid of that entirely because it's going beyond our, our intended height. So we'll just take that off entirely and then it the other branch that comes off into two I'm just going to bring it back to where it again goes into two with a leaf scar just beyond it to allow for that sort of height that we had. It branches into three here and one of them comes back inside the structure of the tree so we'll we'll want to get rid of that one let's get some different tools we we'll want to get rid of that one and then <clears throat> so we can leave it on for that sort of height up there it comes off and into two there we've got a few varying Branch structures there, so we'll just take it back to here, and then the one that comes off here, we'll keep it on, but take it back to here, bringing bringing everything in a lot tighter. Now over on this branch, we have 
we have the fact that it's going into multiple branching again uh, some of them going off at strange angles so we'll want to tidy that up um, we'll take the one that comes into the branching structure and then there's a bit of a bit that's died off at the top so we'll just take that away as well and then there's a tiny little branch just in here where it branches into two again we will take this one back to that node and we will bring this one back to this downward facing branch we'll see what happens with this but we'll probably end up trimming that back and making it a little bit more compact also here we have it splitting into two and one coming out the middle one going off to the side there is one absolutely bang in the middle which we need to get rid of so we'll just trim that away we have one that comes out which we'll get rid of and then we've got a choice between that one and the one that comes off to the side now this one seems to compete with the main trunk so I think we'll allow for this to have its deviation away from the main trunk and we'll just take that out of the bottom that will die back and we'll be able to flick those off just testing for the lemony sort of smell there's not much to it probably because of um, all the scale etc that we've had on there it all seems okay so this branch is coming out and going quite a way out so I'm going to bring that back to this upward facing in fact I'll bring it back to a little node that's coming out just here so we'll take that out and see what develops there and then further down we've got it branches into two here and we've got an extra shoot coming off there so we'll we'll just remove that because we don't want that becoming all swollen and bulbous <coughs> there is the look the look of something coming out of this side we'll we'll see what develops from it and then probably end up rubbing it off we have a couple of smaller branches coming out down the bottom that I'm thinking about using as some sacrificial branches for the time being to help thicken up the trunk. So we'll, we'll not take those at the moment. We'll, we'll leave, leave them in, in place. If it starts swelling up, we'll at least take one of them off. Um, up here on the branch that we kept, it divides into three here and one goes outwards and the other one goes straight up the more developed one goes straight up so i will just take that one away and then as we get to where it's died back to previously and it shoots off again we do have a branch coming out here so i will just go to the first two leaf nodes of that and just trim it back my initial intention was thinking of coming back to here but we've got some branching that comes off in that direction um, underneath we have two downward facing branches which we'll remove and it all comes out of the same junction we've got another three still coming out of the same junction there's a small one just inside that we'll get rid of and then there's the larger one 
in the middle that will just trim back as close as we can and allow for that to die back and this little branch is flying off quite a lot but there's lots of potential for branching off nearer to it so we'll just take that back and that'll be happy for us for that side and then as we go up across here we've got this downward facing branch which I'm going to take away another downward facing branch which I'm going to take away and then we want it to sort of end in a similar area so I'm going to take the upward branch away just there allowing for a bit of dieback to these and then I'm just going to shorten those to get to, to tidy that up and then we've got one two three four including the main branch coming off here um, we will trim that one back and remove the two that were on the on the back so now we have a sacrificial pair of branches here to help thicken up the uh, the trunk it comes up breaks into two the main trunk going up and then breaks into two again and two again this I'm going to leave on for the time being, but we may end up wanting to remove this branch, but it kind of helps with the shape of the, the tree as it stands at the moment. But as it thickens up and gets taller, the, the main canopy is going to be up the top and we'll probably want to lose some of the lower branching as it gets to our main height. So just looking for any other clean up areas. We have... This one here that I'm going to take right back to this junction. That one goes into two. This one splits into two, splits into two, two, two and two. That's got three, but there a bit. We'll take the downward facing one away. And then just round on this one that comes up here, we've got it going into two, two and two. They're all very close to each other. Um, and then towards the end, the branches are still developing. I think we'll let that grow, let it establish and then decide whether we want to even keep this branch at all. And then whether we want to keep any of the ramification that's going to happen there. And obviously then if it comes up and goes into our canopy, we've got some multiple trunks that are coming in. Um, it may be that we end up shortening this main branch that's disappearing off to one side. But for now, the fact that it's so young and we've only just started with it, I'm quite happy to, to go with exactly where we're at at this moment in time. So our next step is going to be to get the tree out of the pot rake the soil down to a level where we can see the um, what's going to be our root plane, tidy the roots up and um, start looking to clean those up for uh, repotting. So that's going to be our next step. So here we go, well uh, my favourite part, getting the tree out of the pot and exposing them roots and seeing what we've got. So we'll just give the pot a little squeeze to free it up ever so slightly give a tug on the trunk and it comes out really nicely so we can see there's lots of roots in the soil it was in no way pot bound by the looks of it so it wasn't desperate to be uh, to be repotted but with all the little flies and larvae that could be in this soil it is desperate to be repotted. So we'll rake away from the base of the 
tree and see what uh, root mass we have on this. I can see that we've already got lots of fine roots. There are a lot of crossing roots which will obviously be tearing as we rake through the radial roots that we want to keep and we dearly hope for a nice radial root mass. There does appear to be quite a few crossing roots in here, some thick thick roots that I can see quite immediately present. Um, we do have something growing here and it, I'm not sure what it's going to be but we'll we'll go down to it and see if we can find out what it is and never know it might be something we want to save. So we'll carry on raking these out. They are very tight in here so although they, it wasn't root bound to the pot we uh, certainly were really tight nice roots um, for this tree. Now if you want to see a really nice uh, root base on a lemon tree uh, I can divert you to uh, back to Nigel Saunders the bonsai zone um, he has a series on a lemon tree and there's one video in particular that um, I've watched many many times knowing that I had my lemon tree coming up and uh, it's called lemon tree bonsai I'll put a link to it down the bottom it's one of his most popular uh, bonsai videos he doesn't know why but it is one of his most popular videos and it's a good video um, and he goes through exactly the same process that I'm going through here apart from it was a nice clean pest free tree and um, the roots on that tree the radial roots are something else they are, they're really good you can tell that Nigel's been looking after that tree for I think he says you know 20 years or so but definitely a good number of years he's been looking after that tree and uh, doing a really really good job so I'll put the link to that video down below in the in the description so that uh, if you haven't seen it which I don't believe you won't have done uh, if you haven't seen it you can take yourself off and uh, and go and watch that video as well because uh, I love watching that that video and it's one of my favorites we have a little bulb which I will save <laughs> just to uh, put on put in some soil and see what we get there's another little bulb there they look like they might be tiny daffodils or something I don't know um, but we'll we'll get them out of here and we'll get them planted into something and we'll see what they grow as. I'm quite intrigued as to see what they turn out to be. So we have some gnarly looking roots coming up and bending around all over the place. But we'll continue to uh, rake the old soil out of this root mass. And uh, then we'll have somewhere to go with it. Oh. So we'll rake out from the bottom again in that standard radial fashion. Just bringing all the old soil out, detangling the roots as best we can. I thought I felt the bottom of the, of the tree for a moment then. We do have some nice roots in all of this. And I'm sure we can train a lot of it up, cut a lot of the ones that are going all over the place and trim them back to uh, to be nice and radial so we'll just keep combing it out uh, 
but I don't think it's going to take much to get a nice root base on this. The, uh, it's nice and shallow, the, the root bottom, if we can ever see where it is. I think, I think I can gauge it a little bit, but we've got all these roots coming out and the actual root mass isn't too bad down there. Uh, just a little bit more raking out and then I'll go and wash them keep them nice and damp for while we're working on them also um, but yeah let me uh, let me go and wash these out and I'll uh, I'll come back so here we are with the roots pretty much cleaned out <clears throat> the root plane is going to start right down here basically where the the roots exist at the moment so that's spot on we've got a couple of high ones that will that will cut away um, but then we need to get to work on some of these that cut around and go literally all over the place um, so we're going to probably lose a substantial amount of roots on this <coughs> tree so uh, without further ado let's start root pruning so just to work from the top, I'm just going to, that actually flows quite nicely actually, so before I make that decision, the planting angle could be slightly for the curve to come that way, so we could actually retain that root that comes out to the side and have a slight angled planting we've got the main roots that are coming off down here and that might just blend in as it thickens up into the soil going forward so we will actually keep that one there's one high one up here that needs to go so that's gone and we can see the root see down into it quite a bit better now we've got a a main tap root that comes off and does some fancy dog legging about so let's work as best we can with the ones that are absolutely going everywhere so we've got one main one that comes off comes down to here then swings a turn down here and here so just for now if we if we take that off as it does a u-turn see how much root we lose we lose quite a bit but it will give us something to work with and that root although it does do a little bit of a zigzag it um, it does flow quite a bit nice so yeah we've got one here that comes from down here and then swings up so what we'll do is where it comes down and then swings up we will horizontal cut and take the upward swing of that away a lot of roots again I think we will lose quite a bit of roots we have one root here that comes off the top and swings over so we'll take that right back also to where it's coming from these scissors aren't the best So we've lost another lot of root there. We've got another one here that comes out. Find out where it's coming from. It comes out and then swings a 45 degree up and across. So we'll take that back to where it takes its deviation. You can see the root even after that swings around and does all sorts of twists so but i'm thinking we're going to be okay with this we'll just go to the underneath and just look for any that are going down and we can see one main one here that's going down in a downward motion so we'll take that away we'll just look for any others we have the main root that flattens out and sits quite nicely um, 
some of the other routes we'll be able to work with a bit we'll just take that downward route away and then that route we might be able to work with but by the time we get it into a pot and try and pull it out no, we'll take that one away as well horizontal cut that across so we'll just see what we what we're working with here we do have some nice long roots and just see how they comb out so we have one there that comes out raidly but then takes a, a pretty strong turn so we'll just take that back Right, sorry about that, we had a bit of a <laughs> battery go flat there and I was just looking at some roots and I believe it was one here that comes out, flows down and then goes, starts going up again. So what I want to try and do with that one, which uh, you can see it there going up and around, is where it starts kicking back up, I'm going to take a horizontal cut and take the bit that goes up away. Now I think we'll just have a comb out of the roots that we have left, which is not a lot considering what we started with. And then we can start doing some radial pruning of the roots. So I'm just going to quickly do that. I'm going to trim the roots back to an equal point for each of them and then any of these that are going down we'll get rid of so, so we just take so we just take the down facing roots away and then we'll have a look at sizing it for a pot and just break out the roots again we do have one root here that we can reposition around and hopefully that will sit considerably better just have a look at our root plane we've got some roots that are just going up so we'll just trim those back and then I think we can start looking to get this in a pot so I have a couple of pots So I have a couple of smaller pots that I'm looking at, um, but if they don't fit, in, if it doesn't fit into any of these, we're going to have to go with a pot that's far too big for it. And really, for where we are, um, we would be hacking away so many roots that we really would be asking for trouble. So we can't get it into a a root small enough. Uh, sorry a pot small enough for that but we do have a larger pot that if we choose a, a front which I think that is kind of the front for me we can look at getting this into the pot So with that being the front, we would need to take a few a few roots off the front and the back 
and then that will go in quite nicely into this pot and there's loads of room for the roots to uh, to grow out so I'll just go and uh, clean this pot up we'll get some drainage screens and some soil and start looking at potting this potting this up so I'll give the pot a rinse and it's looking quite good we do have a, a drip tray for it as well um, but I've got a couple of these plastic pre-made screens that will go over the drainage holes in the bottom and what we'll do is we'll put a layer of soil into there from our grown by let's do bonsai soil pot thank you Maisie once again and we'll just put a layer of soil into the pot and we'll just Make that create a nice little layer, that's it. And then we'll look at bringing in the tree. And that was the front. And that's going to go in there quite nicely. Just, uh, it is quite bang centre to the pot. I think we can move it across this way because we've got this overhang. So I'll just move it to that side of the pot. And I think, I think I like that. So we'll just take some more of the bonsai soil and start putting it around the roots. soil in it does seem to stand up quite nicely on its on its own and while the soil is nice and dry I'll just take a chopstick and just work the soil into the roots that are there you'll notice that the root plane is is underneath the soil at the moment but because this is only just starting its journey into becoming a bonsai the root plane showing off the roots is a is a long way off so we'll just make sure that uh, we get the soil in between all the roots nicely left hand not to work not working as well as the right and we'll get that into position i may put some rocks just either side of the tree just to keep it in place but they're going in nicely you can see the the level of the soil is going down ever so slightly as it goes in between the roots and just get some more soil get it up to the level of the pot see how that sits still got plenty of room for soil to go in I think we do need to get a stone on that side and we'll just put more soil to get to the lip of the pot it's used near enough the whole bowl that I brought in fortunately we do have some more outside for the next ones and we'll just hold that in position while we 
tamp down the soil. Next thing to do is to give it a water. So here I go with the water, get it over all the soil. We should see it start dribbling through the drip trays at the bottom. Keep it nice and close to the soil so it doesn't chuck it everywhere. And it's just leaking through the bottom now, a bit of cloudiness to it as it takes all the fine particles away just move my tools out of the tray so that we don't get flooded and I'll just keep it flowing through to make it nice and till it runs clear which it seems to be running quite clear now we'll let that soak through and then we'll give it another water I'll just go and see if I can find uh, a couple of stones just to place either side so I have a couple of stones here that are quite big but for the intention of just Putting them into <laughs> mm. they are ridiculously big but I will put them on after I've watered it again just to make sure that the the tree stays in position and if I can find anything different I will certainly be using something different because that is just a bit too much so we'll just Squirt through with the bottle water system. And it is all breaking through nicely. Is running a lot clearer now so here we go the start of the lemon tree bonsai we'll just place that rock on that side and we'll just place that rock on that side we'll get this put into a tent uh, we're going to have to carry out some work on one of the tents, the one this came out of, because obviously we need to make sure that everything else isn't infested with all the flies, etc. and all that sap that was all over the place. So we'll get this somewhere while we wait to get it into the tent uh, for it to, to carry on growing nicely, and hopefully it will. Uh, we'll look after it over the next uh, couple of weeks, make sure that everything's okay, and we should see it grow nicely again and uh, become a nice nice bonsai so <clears throat> that's the end of part one of citrus saturday um, join me for part two uh, but in the meantime i've been scott winard and this is let's do bonsai and we'll see you soon